In this problem, we're asked to prove the, remain, or the, prove the rest of the limit comparison test. So it was, uh, the first part was proved for you, which says that um, if you have uh, you know, two sequences meeting this criteria, or two series meeting this criterion, so k greater than m, meaning that if you go far enough out in the sequence, then um, both terms are strictly, or greater than or equal to zero. And if the limit of uh, you know, sequence a sub k over b sub k is equal to l, um, where L can be plus or, you know, positive infinity, uh, can't be negative infinity because our terms are, we're assuming our terms are greater than or equal to zero if we go out far enough. So it could be positive infinity, zero, or um, a pos strictly positive real number. So case one uh, deals with the uh, case when L is some positive, strictly positive uh, real number. So not equal to zero, not equal to infinity. Case two, uh, oh, and the result from part one was, of course, that they, uh, one converges, then the other converges. If one diverges, then the other diverges. So part two, the result isn't quite as nice, but we can still get kind of a partial result. Um, so if L is equal to zero in this case, so if the limit uh, as uh, K goes to infinity, of a sub k over b sub k is equal to zero. So if that limit is equal to zero and also um, so the b sub k converges, then um, a sub k also converges is what we're trying to prove. So let's use the fact that we know that this limit is equal to zero. Now the definition of a limit means that um, if we go far enough out in the sequence, so um, for any, say, epsilon greater than zero, so we'll make this epsilon as small as we like, uh, there is a, we'll call it um, n, which is, of course, dependent on epsilon. If we change epsilon, our n is going to change. Uh, so, such that uh, for all uh, k greater than n, so this just means that there's an n such that if we go out past n, we get this following result. Um, we get, uh, in terms of our sequence, a sub n right over here. Um, a sub k over b sub k minus the limit, the absolute value, so the distance between terms in our sequence if we go out far enough in the limit is less than epsilon. Um, and of course, this is going to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. This means that zero is less than or equal to, well, L is just equal to zero now, by assumption. And A sub k and B sub k are considered to be greater than zero if we go out far enough. And we're assuming that we went out far enough. Um, say, if uh, by chance this n happens to be less than the m that guarantees uh, all the terms are positive past it, then we'll just take um, the maximum of those two numbers. So we can assume that uh, this is positive, or um, the a sub k over b sub k is positive uh, if we go out far enough. So we get this result. Uh, multiplying by b k gives us zero is less than or equal to a sub k is less than or equal to epsilon times b sub k. Now, remember that uh, this is for any epsilon greater than zero. So usually we're interested in really small epsilons. Can we make um, you know, epsilon, or can we take epsilon as small as we want and then you know, get you know, our sequence or our series or function, or whatever, cl as close to the limit as we, as we like. But in this case, we're actually going to let epsilon be something relatively large. We're going to let it uh, epsilon equal one. So this is uh, let epsilon equal one. And then we get zero is less than or equal to a sub k. It's less than or equal to b sub k. And hopefully this looks familiar just from the comparison test. This is pretty much what we're given. Um, and then if we look at our assumptions here, the you know, b sub k converges, so the bigger of the two uh, series converges, then um, well, just use the comparison test. 
you know, if the bigger series converges, the smaller one um, has to as well. Uh, so, um, I was going to say that sum of AK uh, from K equals M to infinity. Uh, we have to use M to infinity because we don't, we need all the terms to be strictly positive and we don't really know what's happening uh, when K is less than M. So this converges. And it converges by a comparison te uh, test. So that proves the case when the limit of you know, a sub k over b sub k is equal to zero. Now if the limit is equal to infinity, we'll use a similar argument, but we'll have to modify it just a little. So let's, this is part three. Uh, so let's assume that the limit as uh, k goes to infinity of a sub k over b sub k is equal to infinity. Well, rather than looking at this sequence, there's not really much we can do because before we use that argument where we're able to look at you know, zero or able to get it down to zero, less than or equal to a over k, less than or equal to um, epsilon. Well, instead of doing that, let's, uh, we're not going to be able to get that because our limit is infinity. It doesn't make sense to take the absolute value of anything minus infinity. So instead, let's look at the limit as um, k goes to infinity of 1 over a uh, over k over b over k, or b sub k. So now the denominator here is going to uh, infinity, which means the entire thing is going to 0. But the entire thing is also equal to uh, the limit as k goes to infinity of b sub k over a sub k. Um, and that's going to be equal to zero. So we could just apply the same logic, same reasoning that we did in part two, and we could say that I'm not going to write it again, but we'll assume that you know for um, every epsilon greater than or equal to, or greater than zero, there exists some n such that if we go you know, past n, then we'll get uh, the nice result of zero less than or equal to b over k over a sub k. Uh, minus zero, less than or equal to epsilon. And um, again, by the same reasoning, this will uh, always be positive, or the uh, ratio inside the absolute value signs will always be positive. So we can write b sub k and multiply by a sub k, we get a sub k times epsilon. And now, again, we're going to let epsilon equal zero or excuse me, epsilon equal 1. So now we get 0 is less than or equal to b sub k, is less than or equal to a sub k. And now let's apply the comparison test to this inequality using the assumptions that we have in part 3. So we're assuming that b sub k diverges. So the smaller of the two series diverges, so that means that the larger also diverges. I'm going to say thus, AK diverges by comparison test. Uh, 